really good to help people. So I decided to apply to Joint Samaritans and here I am. The process was really quite easy, did it online uh, and it chose my local branch, contacted them and I had a reply very quickly and luckily it was quite close to the selection process so within two or three weeks uh, I, was, uh, I was here at Kilmarnock. Well, actually I heard about Samaritans through through my job, uh, my full-time job, through the, the course of my day-to-day -day job, we come into contact with people that can be in real emotional distress. Generally our procedures are to signpost to Samaritans, so it made me wonder what happens next um, and what I could do to, to play my part and to, to helping people that really need it. Your training really starts once you become a Samaritan. Yeah, the training programme is wonderful, it, it really it sets you up for your first call. But once you've had your first call, that's when your training really starts. And you never stop learning. Every call is different. We don't always deal with people that are suicidal. We deal with all sorts of problems. And we have to be ready for that and, and deal with them and listen very carefully to what they have to say. Focus your attention on them. Show that you care and never give advice. Empathise as much as possible, but never give advice. Difficult to start with, it is very, very difficult because it, you naturally want to give people advice, but you train yourself out of that. You're, you are there for them, but you don't give advice because it, it may be the negative thing to do, it, it, it may completely reverse what you're trying to do. I volunteered and asked to join Samaritans through family problems so that I could try and help other people the experience that I had done at home in that way, family members. Training was hard, um, but it was well worth it in the end once you'd completed your set one and your set two. The selection day when I went along, it was a, a general information session where um, it was explained a little bit more about Samaritans and what, our, what the expectation was um, in terms of duties and things like that. Well, at the end of the, the selection day, um, once we had our group activities, there was a discussion um, a one-on-one -on -one discussion with one of the selection team members where it was explained that Samaritans can come from all walks of life and the only requirements are is that you're able to listen and be non-judgmental. When I got told that I had been selected to be a Samaritan, it was a, a phone call later on that day and the next steps were going to be attending the, the initial training with the first module being in a couple of weeks from that time. Once I started training, um, it was six months training that included classroom-based training and also mentoring, where you had a, a colleague um, that was sitting with you when you were taking calls, which was very, very valuable. The first time I picked up the phone, it was it was like stepping into the unknown. Um, when I was listening, when my mentor was taking phone calls, it seemed really, really straightforward. The conversation was flowing. When I took my first call, I just my mind went completely blank, and then. Once the person that I was, I was speaking to on the phone started talking, things just started to slot into place. The training started to come back to me and I got over that, that initial panic feeling and it just became natural. Well, apart from the obvious telephone calls that we have, uh, we also use SMS and we use email and we have um, callers who drop into the branch for a face-to-face. -face. Just when the branch is open um, during the day, up till nine o'clock at night, but it it's depends on a particular day uh, that we're available to, to open up. As a probationer, I volunteer. I've, I've been at uh, a local school um, with my mentor, as it turns out, uh, to speak to fifth year pupils uh, at a local academy. I've also did a mental health day um, with the same school and manned a stall there to speak to pupils and uh, staff at the school about what Samaritans do. It's important to know that we don't give advice uh, as Samaritans, and that's one of the things I think I struggled with at the very beginning to be told that we wouldn't give advice. But in actual fact, when you go on the phones and you complete your training, I think it's really important um, that when you give people the time and the space um, to speak on the phone and you support them with that, it's probably one of the most empowering things you can ever do as a Samaritan. And when we're talking to people, we make sure we have patience, we use open questions, and we reflect back to them. And we have courage because sometimes we have to deal with very difficult situations and we do that in a very sensitive manner, as best we can. And that's where the skill and the training really kick in. But you never stop learning. You always learn. Every time you come and watch, there's something different to deal with, and you'll learn. It's interesting being a support volunteer. 
um, I get to do all sorts of different things to help out with the name of the branch. I get to go on school talks, which is quite important for the branch to get out there to let the younger people know who we are and what we do. I also attend uh, information stalls, basically helping give out information about what we do. And it's very interesting and it's nice to get involved in something, even though I'm not a listening volunteer, I still feel that what I do is quite vital to the branch. We go out to, to schools, obviously uh, children are an important part of this whole thing where caring for mental health, because we've all got mental health, young or old. We go to prisons, the guys there, or girls, they're under pressure, they're a difficult time in their lives, so we'll go out and we'll support them. I'm actually part of the, the prison team, I relate to that, I like the fact that we can go and support people. We actually have what they call listeners in the prison. These older prisoners, well, not older, they're just longer term of prison is what I want to say because they're there for a while. And a lot of these people have decided that they, they want to turn their lives around, put more back into society. So we go and train them up as what we call listeners. And then as and when people in the prison, that perhaps people on short sentences, they feel a little stress, they've got some problems, rather than talk to the authorities, the prison authorities, they can ask to speak to one of our listeners who will actually go and have a one-to-one -one meeting with them and, and I like the fact that we go in and we support what we are calling the listeners. It's good getting into the schools as I say, they tell them who we are, what we're about, hey perhaps that they might decide to come along and become a Samaritan or we plant their little seed in the head of what we're about, what we do and they might not need us in their teens or their 20s, 30s, but who knows at what some point in their life they might think, hey, I remember I've got a little bit of stress and I remember Samaritans and I might just contact them. We, we try and get out into the community again and uh, so if there's any local fates or organisations that are running a, an open day of any type, we get invited along uh, to come and set up a stall and we can be there and we've got some literature we can hand out, we obviously identify ourselves with our t-shirts and we'll chat to people tell them what we're about and yeah we try and raise money wherever we can yeah. Deep breath on the first ring, settle nerves on the second ring, pick up an answer on the third ring and you're ready to go, fully focused. Not everybody that phones is suicidal, we really deal with an awful lot of different problems, loneliness, people with money problems, people with all sorts of difficulties. You, you really don't know what you're going to be dealing with. When that phone rings, you have to just listen carefully and focus on what they're saying and then deal with it from then on.